All right, guys, I want to do something fun today. So we all know the crypto world is full of wild predictions, some that miraculously come true and others that are hilariously wrong. But today, I want to lighten up the mood and take a break from the markets by diving in to the 10 craziest predictions I've seen this cycle. We'll analyze each one to see if there's any chance of them coming true. Now, let's start with the craziest category of them all, meme coins. So one of the biggest surprises of this cycle is that meme coins significantly outperformed other sectors. But I came across a prediction that took this to another level. It said that the combined market cap of all meme coins would hit $1 trillion this cycle. But is that actually possible though? Well, let's dig in a little to find out. For the category to get there, we're looking at about a 25X from its current market cap, which doesn't actually seem that crazy, especially if you consider the performance of some key projects in that sector. I mean, Doge and Sheeb probably aren't gonna do a 25X, but projects like Pepe, Bonk, Whiff, and Popcat have the potential to absolutely explode once alt season arrives. But before you start thinking that I'm a delusional moon boy, there is another side to consider. First off, history shows us that 99.99% of meme coins go to zero. And beyond that, the math simply doesn't add up. Let's say that in a bullish scenario, the overall crypto market cap hits 10 trillion this cycle. This means that if meme coins were to get to 1 trillion, it would be 10% of the entire crypto market. And honestly, that feels unlikely to me. After all, there are a lot of other sectors like AI crypto, Dpin, and RWAs. Not to mention, platforms like Pump.Fun have flooded the market with new meme coins, so this sector is getting held back by dilution. That's why I could see meme coins hitting 500 billion in my most bullish scenario, but 1 trillion is just too much for me. Anyhow, next up is not only a prediction, but also something that a lot of people are hoping for, and that's Gary Gensler being removed from the SEC within the next year. Now, this one's gonna stir up a lot of emotions, but let's try to keep it rational here. You see, Gary Gensler was once in a power position at the SEC, having the full backing of the establishment as he looked to attack the crypto world. But times have changed, and recently, he's been stacking up L's after L's. Thanks to a bunch of lawsuits won by crypto companies such as Ripple, and also political pressure from both sides of the aisle, Gensler's position looks weaker than ever. But what's really gonna make a difference here is the upcoming US election. Donald Trump has promised to fire him on day one. So if Trump is elected, Gensler might actually leave of his own accord, like even before his term ends. However, if Harris ends up winning, he might actually get promoted to Treasury Secretary, which would be a nightmare for us, as he could continue his vendetta against crypto in that role. So this year's election will be crucial for both our industry and Gary Gensler's future. But if you ask me, I do think he's out within the next year. All right, this next prediction has everything to do with Bitcoin adoption and how it's progressing worldwide. So El Salvador made history when it made Bitcoin legal tender back in 2021. But to this day, it remains the only nation in the world to do so. So the prediction is that at least one more country follows suit, making BTC an official currency in their country. Now that for sure would be amazing for adoption, but will it actually happen though? Well, the country that has the best chance of making this happen would be Argentina because they were in a terrible place economically with inflation upwards of 200%. But then Javier Malay came to power and flipped their economy upside down. One thing that he has teased is potentially using Bitcoin as a solution to some of their economic woes. Argentina has even had discussions with El Salvador's Digital Assets Commission to see how they could adopt Bitcoin in practice. So there's no doubt that there's something brewing over there. And if you ask me, I do think that Argentina will one day adopt Bitcoin in some way, shape or form. But the million dollar question is, how soon? 
the discussion going on in Argentina is still pretty high level. And this isn't something that will happen overnight. So my take is that this won't happen in this cycle, but Malay has shown us that he's quite bold with his moves. So I wouldn't be surprised if he sped up the timeline. Now, our next prediction is a bit different because it's something that's actually happened before. And that's the Coinbase app hitting number one in the App Store. So this has actually happened twice in prior cycles, showing us just how wild the bull market got. But can lightning strike a third time and make this happen again? Well, it seems like the answer should be an easy yes. Like as soon as the bull market returns, retail comes back, and the biggest US exchange gets a ton of signups, right? Well, actually, I'm not so sure about that because you gotta wonder whether it'll be new participants coming in or old ones returning after a long hiatus. If the latter is the case, then the number of Coinbase app downloads would actually be much lower as those folks already have the app downloaded. But also, I think that this time might be different due to the introduction of the ETFs. I can easily see a world where the main driving force behind this cycle is institutions rather than retail. And if that's the case, well, they won't be using the Coinbase app to buy crypto. They'll be using brokerages to get things like the BlackRock Bitcoin ETF. So for this one, I'm gonna say not going to happen. I mean, the Coinbase app could get close, but it will not hit the number one spot that everyone is expecting. Okay, so this next prediction is bound to get some people angry as it's been dominating the discourse around crypto Twitter. And the prediction is that ETH will lose its number two spot and get kicked out of the top five altogether. Now, that's quite the crazy prediction if you think about it, given ETH's nearly decade-long dominance in the number two spot. But ETH has been struggling lately any way you slice it. If you look at the sole ETH chart, you'll see that that's breaking out and is at new all-time highs. And then beyond Seoul, I could see a world where BNB takes off when CZ gets out of jail, and a world where TON dominates as the Telegram ecosystem continues to grow. But all that being said, there are some great points in defense of ETH as well. First of which is the new ETFs that have changed the game. Although we are yet to see crazy demand come in due to those, I do expect them to be a vehicle for a ton of institutional money to flow into ETH once the market improves. Also, when you look at the biggest players who are getting into the crypto space, such as BlackRock and Sony, you see them choosing Ethereum to build on, not other platforms. So in terms of this prediction, I'd pump the brakes a bit. While there's no guarantee that ETH will keep its number two spot forever, I don't think that it will fall that far behind anytime soon. Now for our next prediction, we're moving on to Mr. Dogecoin himself. Yep, that'd be Elon Musk. So Elon has been in and out of the crypto world for a while now, sometimes showing more interest than other times. But this prediction says that he will order his companies, most notably Tesla, to take things to the next level by using their infrastructure to mine Bitcoin. Now, this might actually be a profitable move for them, but if we think about it, I'm not so sure that it'll happen. Elon has raised some concerns about BTC in the past, namely its lack of environmental friendliness. And not long ago, Tesla sold a decent chunk of its Bitcoin stack. Also, in a recent interview with Kathy Wood, he said that these days, he doesn't spend a lot of time thinking about crypto at all. So even though this may be a good move for his companies, I just don't see it happening because it's not on his list of priorities unless something major changes. Anyhow, let's move on to a more worrisome prediction. One that says that someone we all know will cause the next Luna style collapse in our industry. That person would be Justin Sun, the founder of Tron, and he's pretty notorious for having done some shady stuff over the years. That's why some people say that he is on borrowed time and that this cycle will be the one that finally brings him down. Now, if we look closer, we actually see a lot of red flags that suggest that he's playing with fire and that there may be some substance behind this prediction. There's been rumors that he uses his exchange's funds as his own bank, which is eerily similar to what SBF did at FTX. But another worrisome point is that a stablecoin, USDD, could potentially collapse. It was reported that Sun secretly removed almost $750 million worth of Bitcoin backing USDD, meaning that now it's entirely backed by his own coin, TRX. 
All of this was done without a vote in the Tron Dao, and this sort of secret activity suggests that it could be a ticking time bomb that can go off at any second. Given that a stablecoin DPEG was what brought down Luna, this is especially concerning. Also, Sun has been charged by the SEC for using his exchanges to artificially inflate TRX's volume. So yeah, all things considered, there seems to be a lot of smoke here, but I'm gonna go out on a limb and say that even if Justin Sun's empire collapses, it won't happen within the next year, as I don't see the same concrete weaknesses that I observed with Terra Luna or FTX. Anyhow, for this next prediction, let's talk about one of the only use cases of crypto that has found mass adoption, and that'd be prediction markets. I'm talking about platforms such as Polymarket, which has gotten a lot of attention lately for their election betting markets, even getting coverage from the mainstream media. But the prediction here is that Polymarket will reach an insane 1 billion monthly volume in some non-political category. So this is actually a hot take, because historically, these prediction markets have only ever been successful at election-related topics and have fallen off after the elections are over. If we look at the stats, we see that their presidential election market has pulled in over 750 million in betting volume. But when we look at other markets, such as the 2025 Super Bowl winner and when the Fed will cut rates, those are only doing 17 mil and 12 mil, respectively. So yeah, I mean, those numbers aren't that bad, but honestly, they are tiny compared to the 1 billion figure being thrown around. Also, that 1 billion figure is for monthly volume. And currently, the platform's all-time volume just eclipsed 1 billion. So to do that in one month in a non-election category, I just don't see it happening. All right, for our next prediction, we're finally gonna talk about some specific coins, which I bet many of y'all have been waiting for. So this prediction says that Cas and Tau will enter the top 10 coins on CoinMarketCap. That's Caspa and BitTensor, if you don't know. Now, there's no doubt that these two projects have outperformed this cycle. Both have seen amazing growth since their launch. And more importantly, they've both held up quite well during this mini bear market that we're in. Cas is still up 369%, while Tau is up 435% over the past year. So reaching the top 10 doesn't seem that crazy to me. Cas is currently outside the top 20, while Tau is just outside the top 30. So they're actually quite close already. But this prediction ignores one massive thing, which is all the other projects out there. Like even if Cas and Tau experienced strong growth, they would still be competing against all the other projects trying to get there themselves. But for me, it's not about whether Cas and Tau can get into the top 10. They certainly could but whether or not they can stay there, which is the much tougher challenge. Anyhow, in our predictions, we already covered one unsavory character, AKA Justin Sun. But this next prediction is about another one, Martin Screlly, and how he may be going back to jail for fraud. If you don't know, Screlly is the infamous pharma bro who cornered the market for an anti-parasite medicine and then ramped up its price over 5,000%. This made a lot of people mad at him, but what he eventually got locked up for was something completely different, securities fraud. Now he was let out early on parole, but surprise, surprise, he found his way into the crypto space and is up to no good once again. You see, recently a Trump related meme coin, DJT, skyrocketed after people claimed that it was backed by Trump himself. The project's creator was initially unknown, but when it was revealed that Martin Screlly was involved, it sparked outrage across crypto Twitter. Some people even said that his involvement might have violated his parole. So there's no doubt that he's playing with fire, but has he actually committed a crime here? Well, that I'm less sure of, and I'm definitely not willing to bet on it. So unless something more concrete comes out, I think he lives to fight another day and won't go to jail for this. Phew, that was a lot of crazy predictions, wasn't it? But what do you think about them? Do you agree with my verdicts? And more importantly, do you have any crazy predictions you want to share? One of my crazy predictions is that crypto airdrops are dead and cannot continue in their current form. If you want to find out why, just watch this video right here.